prior to preparation of the plans or specs, and it identified all the areas that had issues based on the survey information that was obtained. Um, so to upgrade or to finish that out prior to starting the grading for a future paved runway 1735, there would need to be another series of uh, drainage upgrades completed uh, prior to that. With ultimately the airport layout plan does show paving runway 1735. Um, again, that's just a wish list that's out there for FAA to consider. They're going to cross-reference to make sure this is all in compliance with the planning document um, before they would even entertain funding that particular project. As far as funding goes, there are several um, available resources out there for participation. Um, the federal side would be the uh, Federal Aviation Administration. At 90%, they would pick up 90% of the cost for all the eligible items. Um, that includes design services, land acquisition, planning, environmental, um, or um, construction costs. There's three forms of uh, funding that that can come from. Uh, Non-primary entitlement, which airports such as the size of the Garden Municipal Airport, you're entitled to $150,000 um, every fiscal year under the current program. Um, what's shown there towards the bottom of the screen is the current available non-primary entitlement that you have at your discretion. FAA allows the sponsor to bank up to four years worth of entitlement before it would in essence expire. Um, you currently have four years worth of a full $150,000 with the funds from 2011 expiring this fiscal year, which ends September 30th of 2013. That money is being utilized for the acquisition of the Sizemore track that currently the grant application has been submitted for, in addition to a portion of your $2012. Um, so with the grant offer being um, extended to the city by the FAA, that would tie up to $2011 and some. Um, state apportionment is another um, pot of money through the FAA. Um, every state within the central region, which consists of Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, and Iowa, has a certain allotment of funds that they can use at their discretion. Um, and then the final pot is discretionary dollars. That's when you have utilized all your available entitlement and it's not enough to finish the project. Now you're competing against other airports within the region, so it's based on a priority rating as to whether or not your project would be selected. Um, a project such as the size for the 1735 paving would need to rely on discretionary funds. Um, the state also has a current um, program through KDOT, um, Division of Aviation, um, and they've assisted with several projects out at the airport, as I previously mentioned. Um, it depends on the type of project as in regards to the participation rate. It can range from 90% to 50% to 95, again, depending on what type of project you're seeking to apply for. The other thing in regards to the airport itself um, is the statewide impacts and economic benefits from aviation. In May of 2010, um, the Kansas Department of Transportation Div Division of Aviation commissioned a economic impact study across the entire state of Kansas. This project was funded through the FAA and it was used to examine the relationship between the state system of airports and the economy. They looked at 400, um, I'm sorry, 138 um, airports across the state, eight commercial service and 130 general aviation airports that were analyzed as part of this study. Um, and the economic contribution of each to the economy is what was analyzed. What's shown here is the annual economic benefits across the state, meaning 47,651 total jobs um, across the state of Kansas with $2.3 billion in total payroll for a total output of $10.4 billion. They then broke this down into specific airports um, and Gardner was included in that study um, because they are a public use airport. Um, the first round impacts, which um, include both direct and indirect impacts, were um, evaluated for this location. Uh, the direct impacts are those that are associated typically with on airport businesses and government type tenants. Um, and for this location, it was calculated at $581,800 annually. The indirect outputs are those generally taken um, for off-place or off-airport type of activities and usually are attributed to visitor spending. Um, so it's what's drawn people into the community because of the airport, then they're going out spending dollars elsewhere within the, within the community. Um, 
the second round impacts were also calculated and that's the um, those benefits that result from the recirculation and respending of the direct and indirect Im impacts within the economy so those that are spending money either directly related to the airport or within the community are recirculating that money then back into the community as well for an induced output of $383,600 based on the study that was done back in 2010. Um, the total impacts then are the combination of those. Um, and total jobs, that's anything related to aviation activity within the community. Um, that's what that's accounted for total payroll and then total output. So what, what this shows is the Garden Municipal Airport accounts for over a million dollars annually in, di in direct output and indirect output because of the users of the airport and the folks coming into town because of that. Um, so the question typically is, well, what's, what's contributing to that effort? Um, in the Gardner Airport, um, they have, like David mentioned before, they do have fuel sales. Um, they do have hangar rental. Um, they provide aircraft rental and flight instruction out the airport. Um, there's two other on-airport businesses providing aviation services such as aircraft maintenance and repair and pilot supplies. And I know they're also listed as tow capabilities for glider activities. Um, the Gardner Airport also has a experimental aircraft association. Um, they recently constructed the new hangar that's located out there. Um, and they support flight training activities and flyings and air shoes throughout the year. In fact, the vintage aircraft flying was just held recently, um, and the study that was done identified that as an attractant that brings in people from all over the region. So those folks coming into Gardner for that particular reason are also spending money elsewhere within the community. Um, that's a, a general idea of the, the history of the airport, future projects, and some of the um, statewide um, impacts or the economic impacts from this location. I'd be happy to entertain any questions that somebody might have in regards to any of that information or <coughs> hopefully that presents a better picture. Anyone have questions for, for the report? Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the, the, the presentation. That was, that was very well done and very informative. Dennis, Dennis it's always great to see you guys. Presentation item number three <coughs> is the presentation of the 2013 City Financial Statements and CAFR, which is the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report for those of you that are unfamiliar with the acronym. Laura, good Hi. to see you again. Did you miss me? Yes. Okay, uh, as discussed, this is the presentation of the 2013 City Financial Statements and the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report that was created for the 2013 Financial. Because there are new people in the audience, I don't want to miss an opportunity to discuss this briefly. This is the 10th year that the City has prepared the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, and as a reminder, this is an award program that was created by the Government Finance Officers Association in 1945 to encourage and assist state and local governments to go above and beyond generally accepted accounting principles to uh, prepare reports to evidence the spirit of full disclosure and to recognize individual governments that succeed in achieving that goal. So even though there are quite a few cities and, and counties, 70 percent of all cities and 45 percent of counties with populations over 50,000 participate as well as 45 state governments. However, of approximately 3,900 participants in this certificate program each year, there are only 25 cities in Kansas, and we're one of them. So I would say that the city's independent auditing firm, Alan Gibson Hulick, has completed the audit of your 2013 financial records, and I'm pleased to report, I won't steal a thunder, that we have an unmodified or the highest possible opinion. And I would like to take, I would like to introduce first Mr. Lowry, but just before I do that, I would like to take a moment to recognize my staff because I want you to see the faces of high performance and I'll tell you why in just a minute. So if you guys would stand up. <coughs> oh my goodness, there's so many of you. So starting in front at the left is Jackie Schultz. She's been here just sort of seven years and she is instrumental in, in the high performance we have here. To her right is Nancy. 